Okay, so we saw how do we define, how do we calculate our, ten, uh, our centripetal acceleration? It's given by this, v squared over r. However, what we've been saying all along in this chapter is we're looking at circular motion at constant speed. Okay? When you have any motion around in a curve, you will always have acceleration towards the center. Why is that? Because your direction is constantly changing. Okay? However, there's also another acceleration which we need to consider, and that is if the magnitude of your speed is changing. Uh, the, yeah. So let me, let me just go here. Maybe I'll just go here quickly. So any time you are going around this kind of circular motion or any kind of bend, because your velocity is changing its direction, because this vector is changing, then you're going to have this delta V that is pointing towards the center of the, of the circle, of the curve that you're going in. And so you're going to have an, a, a centripetal acceleration equal to V squared over R the radius. But now, so this is due to this is due to a change in your direction. But what about that's a question mark. What about the acceleration that we're, we're more we're more familiar with? The change in magnitude. Remember if you go from 10 meters per second and then you move you're going at 20 meters per second Right? That's, that's a kind of an, an acceleration we're more used to. That's a change in the magnitude. This is a change in the direction. Well, we also need to consider this. If the magnitude of this velocity is changing, meaning the speed is changing, then we have a tangential acceleration. A tangential acceleration. This is our centripetal acceleration or our radial acceleration towards the center. It's due to the change in direction. And we also have a tangential acceleration, which is due to the change in the magnitude of the, of the velocity. So, if I'm going around a bend, and I change my velocity from 10 meters per second to 20 meters per second, then that means I've changed the magnitude of my velocity. And that is a tangential acceleration. It's always directed tangent to the curve. This is always directed radially. This is directed tangentially. So in real life, you always potentially have these two accelerations. Okay? So this is it. Tangential acceleration, which is equal to dv dt. It is due to the change in your velocity, the magnitude of your velocity. So the tangential component is positive when the speed increases and negative when it decreases. Okay. Now, this is important. There is, um, for any circular motion, we never have velocity pointed towards the center of the circle. So your radial velocity is always zero because velocity is always tangent to the curve always tangent to the curve. Okay? Next, if this velocity we know is constant, if, if the magnitude of the velocity is constant, if the speed is constant, then your tangential acceleration is zero. That makes so much sense. You're going around a bend at a constant speed means that your tangential ve uh, velocity is constant, means your tangential acceleration is zero. Okay. Um, let's look at the, the period t is 2 pi r over this velocity, or it's 2 pi over omega. Now, this is, this is very important here, guys, that if you are going around the, the bend, if you're going in the circular motion, we know already, just because we're changing direction, that we have this radial component. We've got, 
We've got this guy pointed towards the center. We've got that guy pointed towards the center. But what happens if we also are changing our speed? What happens if we're changing our speed? Then we also have this component of tangential acceleration. Okay? And, um, and then what it means is that we have a resultant or a magnitude of our acceleration is given by this. It's given by these two components, AT and AR. AR squared plus AT squared, square root, gives us our um, resultant, our acceleration. I hope that makes sense, guys. The one acceleration is due to the um, change in speed, and the other acceleration is due to um, is due to the change in direction. And so what's interesting here is if you've got a constant tangential acceleration, means the speed is increasing all the time, what does that mean? If this speed is increasing, it's going 10 meters per second, 15 meters per second, 16 meters, 20 meters, it's, ac it's acceleration, accelerating all the time then what does that mean? It means... Where's my pen? It means that this is, this is going to increase the entire time. And this is going to increase, obviously, the entire time. Because your V is changing, your V is changing, 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 so this is going to increase, and your tangential acceleration is going to increase. So that's why you're going to have this, it starts off like this, AR and AT, but this V is changing. It's changing direction and magnitude. So your AR is growing and your AT is growing. Your AR is growing and your AT is growing. So this velocity is growing and it causes both your AR and your AT to grow. And so if you would draw a resultant, it would be along there, the direction of your acceleration vector. Over there, your acceleration vector would be pointed along there. There, your acceleration vector would be pointed along there. Let's see if they, they give it there. Yes, that's what I'm looking for. Oops. Sorry, I don't know how to drive this cockpit. Okay. As you can see, there's AT, there's AR, and there's your acceleration vector. All right? Okay. See you in the next one.